This is about Sidney Poitier and why he is considered by me the lost man. Sidney Poitier was born in 1927, I think February the 20th, 1927. He was born in Miami three months prematurely, unexpectedly. His parents are from the Bahamas, and his mother and father came to Miami in order to sell they produce from their farm, so they were selling tomatoes when Poitier was unexpectedly born three months earlier. Now, they stayed three months in order to nurse the baby Poitier to health. Evidently, they did a good job because he eventually grew to be a scrapling six feet two. Now, Poitier, after that three months, went back to Bahamas. They took him back to Bahamas, and he spent the 15, 15 years of his life in the Bahamas. He had about, I think, five brothers and sisters. But he spent 15 years in the Bahamas, and then they sent him to live with his, his older brother in Miami. <coughs> Now, when he was 16, during the war, 1943, this was during World War II, he lied about his age and enlisted in the Army, where he was stationed, in, I think, Northport someplace, in a VA hospital dealing with psychiatric patients. He did not like the way psychiatric patients was created. Now, this is an aside note. Many of the directors of these psychiatric hospital, the, the character to, should be they inspected themselves. They have to be vetted and find out to be of the highest caliber of moral standards. And they themselves have to make sure their staff is vetted. Because a lot of them are ill, mentally ill people, taking care of mentally ill people. A lot of the staff want to be a better than thou attitude. Sick individuals. So they have to be vetted and make sure from the staff all, all the way down. And they have to be monitored to make sure they're giving the patients the treatment. That's adequate. Okay, that's a side note. So anyway, uh, Sidney Poitier did not like the way the psychiatric patient was treated. He pretended to have some type of mental illness himself. And he told the psychiatrist about it. So the psychiatrist uh, was sympathetic to him, and so he received the medical discharge in 1944, when he was 17. And this is World War II. So he, he moved to New York and he, he tried to, and he worked as a dishwasher and so forth, and he tried to go into the American Negro Theater in, in Harlem. And his first audition, his accent was so great and he could not read the script fluently. And so an elderly Jewish waiter, I guess he was working in, in a restaurant as a dishwasher, the elderly Jewish wait, waiter sat him down with newspapers. And for weeks, he taught Sidney Poitier how to read from newspaper. So the next time he went to the American Negro Theater, he was accepted. And he was cast into a role such as Anna Lucasa, and another role that I can't every time he remember. And that gave him a chance to uh, audition, be accepted into his first breakthrough film, Blackboard Jungle. 
where he played a delinquent high school student. In his breakthrough movie, The Blackboard Jungle, in 1955. Now, he was 28 years of age playing, uh, playing the role of a high school student. And he did it brilliantly. Now he, he was married to a black woman. His first, his first wife was black, Juanita Hardy, a beautiful black woman. He married her. I think it was, um, well, they was married for 15 years. So he married her in the, in the 50s. I think 1950 they got married. Yeah, 1950. They got married. And the time, and he had four daughters by that first wife. But uh, in 1959, while he was still married, he started a affair, a nine year affair with Diane Carroll. Now, Diane Carroll must have known that he was married. So, what kind of ending of their affair would have an end? It started weekly, within a week way because he was married at the time he started out of fear and he did not get divorced from his first wife until 1965 they were married for about 15 years <coughs> so he stayed with diane carroll for nine years then in 1976 he did a movie called the lost man and that's where I get the title that he was the, the lost man. And that's when he really became lost. Diane was powered in my estimation. The person playing the role opposite him was Joanna Sigmund. Uh, I think it's Sigmund, something like that. A Canadian, a white Canadian, Canadian actress in 1976. That's why I say those films where they, they are acting, sometimes it get real. An actress, an actor may get really into that role and they forget themselves and develop an, an attraction. That's why Devon Franklin and uh, Meekin Good problem was her accepting the role and she may get too into that role. Too much, and Devon Franklin realized that. And that may have been the cause of the split up, in my estimation. So anyway, Sidney Protee married that white woman, Joanna Sigmus, that white woman was just against the law of nature. But in their world is acceptable, and a lot of people in their world find it to be acceptable, and do not want to know the truth, to go and go contrary to the truth. Even the Christian people who do not read their Bible carefully, do not read it carefully. It's for inter interracial marriage when they should be the, the very ones against it. So they stayed married for 46 years until his death it is a, a, few, a month ago in, in 2022. They got married in 1976. And Richie had two daughters by her, <coughs> that, 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 that Caucasian woman. And that's why I said he's the lost man. He lived... And then some people now, they, when I said against like a biracial, they, they, they bring up the subject of Book T. Washington and Frederick Douglass. And if that's a way to uh, excuse all biracial, that they redeem them, that they, they save you. <laughs> Stupid. There's white people who do very much good. For, for black people too. John Brown, Viola Lee also even gave their lives. That doesn't excuse every white person for the good deeds of some. 
It does not. Use your common 